This is the VOA Special English Economics Report. When it comes to savings, no amount is too small. Microsaving is a growing part of the international movement of microfinance. The aim is to bring financial services to poor people. Modern microfinance started with Nobel Peace Prizing economist Mohammed Yunus in Bangladesh. In the 1970s, he started small loan programs that would become the Grameen Bank. Currently, microcredit providers are in over 100 countries. Now, microfinance institutions are starting to offer other services, including savings plans. Recently, the nonprofit group Small Enterprise Education and Promotion held a conference in Washington. SEEP works with over 120 groups around the world in efforts to cut poverty. It does this by supporting small businesses. The goal is to help microfinance industry experts share ideas. One idea is called Financial Access at Birth, or FAB. It is designed to start each person with a financial citizenship at birth through a savings account connected to a bank deposit. Rosita Najmi is FAB's program director. She says FAB starts with financial inclusion, but creates other possibilities for inclusion across other sectors of health or education. Mobile or wireless technology will be important to many microfinance services. One meeting at the SEEP conference examined a mobile phone application for saving money. Debbie Dean of the Grameen Foundation says these efforts can also be extended to other financial services. They could include a combination of savings programs and money transfer programs. She says this could provide the most flexibility and convenience for savers. But offering savings, payments, and other services requires more training and controls. Rashid Bajwa leads Pakistan's largest microfinance organization. He says more training is needed. And he says microfinance institutions will need specialized people when they start offering savings programs. Small savings deposits add up, and interest over time makes them grow. This can have a surprising effect for savers and societies. Rashid Bajwa puts it this way. He says the amount of money that poor people have is imaginable. For VOA Special English, I'm Carolyn Pursuti.